Well, I decided to, to do a little bit of research into solar hot air. haven't done a video on that, so I thought I'd share some of the stuff that I've learned. As you know, uh, these solar hot air boxes that you can go buy or build yourself are basically a large unit that is in, it's an insulated box with uh, glazing on the front, and inside is usually uh, aluminum metal uh structure for with air channels and they're usually constructed out of a series of pop cans that are strung together uh, end to end with uh, you know holes cut through the bottom and the top or maybe uh, downspouts from your you know gutter system and there's other uh, configurations but basically it's a you're creating a you know an alumina or a metal structure that can absorb the sun energy and then you use a, a blower system to blow air through the uh, metal structure to basically scrub the uh, the heat energy out transfer it from the metal to the air and then move that hot hotter air into the room and so air is used as the transfer medium of that energy and uh, so it's pretty simple. So it's a matter of designing a box that retains as much of the heat that gets collected as possible and then an efficient way to transfer that heat to the air and move that air into uh, the place that you want to heat up. So first thing I did is went to a site that you can see here which uh, allows you for your particular location to uh, it generates this data here, the BTUs per square foot per day based on the months of the year. So let's go look at that. All right, so here's the uh, place I can enter my zip code. It'll come up with this table. It'll give you both uh, watts per square meter per day and BTUs per square foot per day for your particular location, latitude, longitude. So anyway, just cut and paste this data over into your spreadsheet. Okay, so now taking that same data from that site and just laying it down in here, all I did was I wanted to come up with what uh, the average month would be. And so all I did is just add up these columns. You can see the the actual sun energy between what happens in January and in June uh, is like 3 to 1, almost 4 to 1 in, in this case. Uh, but on average, it comes out to this number here for the or for the whole year divided by 12 months is 1188 is kind of the average number. And then in Minnesota, we average, again, over the course of the year, uh, 4.53 sun hours per day and this is another number you can just find out on the internet for your location some places it's as low as 3 in the United States and other places it's in the high, high fives but Minnesota's not too bad 4.53 and so if I take the amount of BTUs per square foot per day divide it into that 4.53 tells me in a uh, what how many BTUs you're actually getting uh, base, essentially on an average continuous basis on a sunny day how many BTUs there are there now if I want to convert that into watts it's just about a, it's a 30 percent conversion factor so a square foot on a sunny day is uh, going to be about 77 watts of sun energy available and uh, most likely in your area on a sunny day you're going to be getting you know these are ballpark numbers so I'm just trying to get kind of a ballpark number but this is this is what you're going to have available to extract so the next trick then is to <coughs> say okay how can I how can I take this available sun energy and <coughs> utilize it in some way well you have three choices you could use photovoltaic you could use solar thermal which is basically a hot water or a hot water mix system or s hot air solar air well, photovoltaic uh, the the panels you could buy now 
are the just the basic panel itself the efficiencies are now getting up to the high teens but by the time you take into account the uh, losses through the conversion of the DC power uh, to the AC power through your grid tie inverter or through some charge controller to a battery and then the battery to an inverter to run AC devices at best you'll be get able to get about 15 percent of this sun energy converted into something usable and so in my particular example here a square foot of PV uh, at you know basically best case you're going to be looking at about 11.6 watts per square foot solar thermal is a much better at absorbing the sun energy over a wide uh, radiation spectrum range and it actually has been demonstrated to be pretty reliable up in the 70 percent efficiency range and <coughs> the primary uh, reason it's not higher is you got basically metal that heats up and a lot of that I shouldn't say a lot but a, a good amount of that energy is going to be a ref is going to be radiated back out because it's a hot heat surface and it's going to be radiated out as heat waves through back th out through the glass and there's really not a whole lot you can do about that there are some glass coatings that on the back side uh, will allow the the heat energy uh, to basically be retained better in the box so some of them you'll, you won't see a nice clear glazing you'll see kind of a pebbled look to them and the idea is to keep the heat waves inside the box once it gets in there but anyway it's quite quite impressive at 70 percent you know that's more than four times better than photovoltaic as far as being able to capture the heat energy and then they you in fact they're using water directly impinging upon the metal surfaces of the piping in a solar thermal box it can very more it can more efficiently move that heat energy sun energy into a storage tank or wherever you're going to use it where a solar air box relies on you know forced convection which is you know trying to get air molecules to scrub off the the heat that's been uh, absorbed by the metal and move that to heat the air and then move the air out Gen generally to be immediately used it's not hot air is not something that's uh, something you could store particularly but anyway it's still been demonstrated quite well up to 55 percent efficiency so what that means is <coughs> we can on an equivalent basis from this 262 we can be able to utilize 144 BTUs per square foot and then uh, seven is equivalent of 77 or excuse me of, of 42 watts equivalent from the 77 that's available per square foot so let's take this one step further all right the other couple of the other kind of rule of thumbs numbers that I've come up with doing the research is uh, usually one square foot of panel is all you really need to take care of about 35 square feet of floor space in your house is kind of the common number uh, I think that's probably a little aggressive but anyway that's the number we'll use here for calculation purposes also people don't really uh, I haven't seen a number you know that people are using for how many cubic feet per minute they should have per square foot of panel well the number I came up with is 3.2 cubic feet per minute looking at a number of the systems that are out there that seems to be a, a ballpark number you'll see some that are uh, lower than that but this is kind of a good number to use if you're if you end up having a blower that's more than that you're probably using more air than you should and uh, and then likewise on the low end if you're not getting anywhere near this amount you're probably not using enough airflow and then if you look at a number of different fans or blowers they'll, they'll tend to consume about a third of a watt per CFM 
so that way you can figure out <clears throat> based on the airflow you need uh, how much of that energy is going to get lost by using a fan to uh, move that air so there's kind of a little bit of loss there but not too not too bad and then <coughs> what you're really shooting for is you like the box to get up t to temperature and then even when you have the blower going that the temperature inside stays pretty steady and uh, the commercial units they all tend to seem to have that on a sunny day that the temperature in the box itself with the blower going will stabilize generally a, a 110 degrees F or greater if it's a good design meaning if it uh, if the box heats up you turn the blower on and then this the temperature drops and it keeps dropping and dropping and dropping meaning you're using too much air then it doesn't ever really stabilize and then uh, and likewise if you blow use the air and it it doesn't uh, you know it keeps going up then you're obviously not using enough another number is this uh, number of BTUs per square foot of home if you look at the sizing like a for gas furnace you take the uh, square footage of your home and multiply by 35 that'll be about the size that they'll usually use for sizing your furnace for your house and uh, again a furnace is not meant to stay on continuously like a like the solar furnace box would be when the sun is shining but it gives you a kind of a ballpark number of, of how many uh, equivalent BTUs will be coming out of your box compared to what's coming out of your furnace when the furnace is running so anyway based on this data I put together a little uh, calculation that <clears throat> if we just take a case of one panel that's one foot wide one foot tall meaning it would basically be a square foot of collection area and then we did say it's 3.2 cubic feet for every square foot so that's calculating correctly we set up here that the number of BTUs per square foot was for one square foot would be 144 we did say that our ballpark number for the number of square feet of floor space for every square foot of panels 35 and that since we're using 0.3 watts per cubic feet and using 3.2 cubic feet per minute airflow that'll consume about a, a one one watt and then uh, using the <coughs> if we want to know the watts that are net generated we take the watts per square foot of 42.4 subtract out what's used for the fan and we're essentially netting out 41.4 in this case so anyway this tells me this calculation is correct so now I can say okay let's say I'm gonna build a four foot wide eight foot tall panel it cal tells me obviously it's 32 square feet how many CFM I'm gonna need uh, which is in this case a hundred uh, 102 CFM and if you look I've done a little bit of looking at these the uh, bathroom fan uh, you know tend to be in the 70 cubic feet per minute range for the average size ones they make larger ones that go up in this range for larger bathrooms uh, and they have also smaller ones so you might consider putting two 50 waters or 50 cubic feet per minute ones in there just so you have some redundancy and maybe they'll together run a little quieter than one larger one or you can have you know one kick on earlier and then have the second one gone once you get to the peak uh, peak part of the day that kind of a situation and then <coughs> how many equivalent BTUs for that box and then the uh, this is the uh, amount of space that they claim it can heat so when the Sun is shining one box, 4B8 box, theoretically can can keep a room or an area that's 1,100 square feet up to temperature. Well, that obviously assumes that you can move whatever you know the air that you collect in the box can be actually distributed pretty well in that area, which is sometimes one of the bigger challenges. But anyway, it is a number that's uh, consistent with our our uh, assumptions here, and then 
this will tell us that we're going to need a blower that's going to consume probably around 31 watts of power. So a lot of people say, well, okay, I'm just going to use a solar panel, a photovoltaic solar panel, to generate the power I need for my fan. Well, to generate 31 watts, it's not too hard. I mean, you, but the problem is that on a on a cloudy day or a hazy day where you're not getting enough, not getting a lot of energy through to the photovoltaic panel, but the box itself could heat up very quickly and be demanding that the blower be on and moving that heat sun sun slash heat energy out that your photovoltaic panel might just not be providing enough power to run the blower so that's a you either have to oversize your photovoltaic significantly and I don't know what that number is so that even on a hazy day it's still going to give you 31 watts or uh, just don't use the photovoltaic use uh, you know your regular house power which is always available and that's in my case that's what I plan to do and then just as another little ballpark thing most of the ones that I looked at they have a kind of an on off control system meaning when the temperature inside the box gets up above 110 degrees Fahrenheit the blower will come on and uh, stay on until the box cools down usually later in the day when uh, the temperature in the box goes below 90 so the idea is it heats up blower comes on stays on for the duration <coughs> and then later in the day uh, the box the sun goes starts to go down box starts to cool down keep the blower on until about 90 F which is still above your room temperature which is generally about 75 F and uh, you've been on a pretty good job of moving the sun energy that's in the box into the space that you're trying to heat. Another way to look at this too is uh, this 1324 watts that we generate that's equivalent to one of these uh, you know 1500 watt space heaters running continuously while the sun is up and uh, I don't know if you have one of these or use one of these and I actually kind of like them we use them in a number of places in the house for you know local spot heating in rooms and so forth. Uh, you know, at, if you pay the national average about 11 cents per per kilowatt hour, these things they they do cost you about 17 cents to run for an hour. But this one uh, four by eight panel that I'm showing here, with the sun is shining, it's essentially uh, avoiding the use of one of these for that period of time where the the sun is up. So, you know, if the average sun hours per day is in the four and a half range. Uh, you know, multiply that by that 17 cents. You know, it tells you you're probably saving 75 cents a day, day in, day out, just by using this panel. And uh, you know, that can add up pretty quickly over the course of a couple of years. So the payback is pretty, pretty good on these uh, these panels. Another way to also look at it is if you were to try to uh, build a 1300 watt solar panel which 1.1.3 kilowatt hour kilowatt uh, solar PV system uh, that's pretty uh, that's a pretty good size system and just looking at the normal installed cost you're going to spend about three dollars per watt for the panels themselves but you add in the uh, the either the inverters the grid tie inverter or a charge controller with batteries and uh, and regular DC to AC inverters with the wiring and the metering and uh, the labor as you're talking more about six dollars per watt installed kind of nominal cost so it's like seventy eight hundred dollars that you would have to spend to get the same amount of energy out of a PV system as you're getting out of just one of these four by eight uh, hot air boxes so from an affordability standpoint, uh, they are fantastic, and uh, they're pretty inexpensive to build on your own and make them not too much different than uh, what you can do if you just go buy a commercial unit. So anyway, that's my synopsis on Solar Air Basics. Hope you enjoyed it. Please leave comments and subscribe. Thank you.